So market volatility everywhere. And no matter where you go, you're reading different stuff that's confusing. Um, you read one article that happens to come in by NBC that says that the labor pool is looking absolutely incredible, that people are back to work. There's not enough job openings. In fact, um, this last month in, in July of 2023, um, the labor pool became tougher for employers and better for employees. And so by over 3% increase month over month, um, July actually was one of the most incredible months for employees. Now, I always tell people this, and I want to dissect this for you guys, because if you want to understand what um, is happening in real estate, there are some contributing factors from everything that um, happens in politics, in finance, employment, unemployment, real estate, banking, interest rates, and they all kind of go at different levels. And so I want to talk to you guys high level here um, so that you could understand some of the low level investments so that you guys can better understand what you should be looking for in the market and understand what you're reading when you're reading all this conflicting, what seems to be conflicting articles and information. It's not as conflicting and confusing as you uh, might think it is if you understood how to understand, dissect, and put all of it together. So on prior videos, which I'll put up um, after this video to recommend that you watch them so that you have a better understanding of how to invest in this crazy market, um, what you should be investing in, and what our build wealth is all about in, in 2023. Now, we continue to build houses, buying land, building houses, and we're also building apartment complexes. And so one of the big things when we're doing this is I, I sit back and people go, okay, well, how is Jerome continuing to buy? How is Jerome continuing to understand um, how the market volatility seems to not affect him and he understands how to mitigate through this? And a lot of it does have to come with what I'm talking about today and understanding the market. Um, one article that I read right when I got started um, today looking for information to bring to you guys was how interest rates just hit an all-time high, mortgage rates just hit an all-time high. Um, mortgage rates just went up to 7.02%. And we haven't seen mortgage rates go that high since 2002, ladies and gentlemen. So it's been a fat minute. When you sit back and you think that it's been over 20 plus years that we've actually seen interest rates, mortgage rates this high, that's alarming to people sitting back going, okay, how do I buy a home? You know, how do I, can I afford to buy a home, which makes it more appeasing to rent product, just like the one that I'm standing in. And one of the big things is that's one side of the sector, okay? Now, when we're looking at economics from a standpoint where you're sitting back going, okay, well, should I just stop buying completely? What happens is if, if the wrong investor reads that article, they withdraw themselves from the market saying, you know what? This is a horrible market. Houses are not going to sell and get stuck in this home and I'm not going to buy it. I'm going to wait for things to calm down. So if you do that, you lose. And here's why. So you have to look at external circumstances that are also affecting the market. What is the unemployment rate doing right now? Well, the unemployment rate right now is actually going down. And one thing, if you watch my prior videos, which I'll put up after this video that I talk about, it, I said, once unemployment rises, you need to pay attention to housing. Because if unemployment rises to like 6% and starts going up from there, we have an issue. And right now, unemployment is, in, is just over 3%. So we're only halfway to where we would need to be to start being more alarmed about foreclosures and the residential single family median home market really getting crushed and annihilated. That's where foreclosures come to the table. You start hitting 6%, 7%, things are really bad. And so one of the indicators, the key indicators that we look for when we're investing in residential real estate specifically is we're not looking at mortgage rates, we're looking at what's happening in the external economy. And when employers are hiring, that means supply and demand indicates that employers need these people to continue um, building and developing what's, what's available and needed in the market right now. And so don't caution yourself too much when you're thinking about the single family market, because the single family market is coming back really strong right now, in spite of what mortgage rates, unfortunately, are, are going through in spite of everything that's, uh, that's happening elsewhere. Now, 
What's another key indicator is the big question. Another key indicator that you want to pay attention to is CPI. It's cons the consumer price index. It's what um, regulates what the average price of a loaf of bread is, what the average price of a home is. It's what consumers are paying in the, in the real market. And so CPI as is the consumer price index. If it increases, inflation goes up, it's a bad thing. And so right now, because the feds are actually raising interest rates to bring inflation down. So the good news, another key indicator that's positive for the residential market is CPI actually dropped more than expected this last month. And so it, they, they were expecting it to drop only 2.6% and it dropped over 3.1%. So not by a massive amount, but still a larger increase in the drop of CPI than the feds were actually looking at. So as we move through the year, and in spite of what's happening with mortgage rates, we could sit com back comfortably and say, okay, if we continue this forward trend of CPI kind of softening a little bit and inflation softening, and it's, if, even if it's softening more than what was expected, guess what the feds will finally lay off of? Interest rates. So one thing that we still have this year is we still have the opportunity for the feds to either increase or decrease um, interest rates. And with the federal fund rate where it sits right now um, being higher than it's been in quite some time, one of the things we need to pay attention to is what it does over the course of not just this year, but the beginning of 2024. So one of the things that we can expect out of this year in regards to um, interest rates is the feds tell us they're still gonna have two more interest rate hikes before the end of the year. I believe that that's true. And I believe that's true in, in lieu of them still trying to control inflation. So, so as we're looking at CPI, as we're looking at unemployment, and as we're looking at interest rates, how do these three factors, how do these three things actually run together? So look, right now, one thing that we can assume is that we're going to have two more interest rate hikes before the end of the year in lieu of the feds trying to control inflation. And they, they're trying to do this because things were going um, gangbusters and inflation in the residential single family home market were going crazy. And if they're going crazy in the single family home market, guess what's happening to furniture? Guess what's happening to food? Guess what's happening to automobiles? Guess what's happening to everything down the road? Everything's going up. Now, if everything goes up as an end consumer, guess what's happening to all the commodities? Um, crude oils, food, everything that's being imported, exported, it all goes up. There's, all, there's a cost for all of this as inflation rises. So right now, when we look at the feds and we look at what has happened over with the CPI over the last uh, 60 days, it's an indicator that things are looking in the right direction for the market to plateau. So with single family homes being the biggest indicator of how the market is gonna be depicted over the course of time, Right now, we know that single family is starting to stabilize. So don't be alarmed by high mortgage rates, ladies and gentlemen. What you should be more concerned with is what's happening with unemployment and what's happening with inflation. And so right now with inflation going down and with unemployment going down, there's no key indicators that, that would otherwise tell us that the market is still in a recession with employment actually rising which would actually put residential real estate into a decline. Look, if you guys want more information like this and you guys um, want to uh, be notified every time we produce content like this, then click and subscribe to our YouTube channel, pound that thumbs up button, and that way you get more content delivered just like this. Now look, ladies and gentlemen, how do we put all this together and what should we foresee as we move into 2023? the end of 2023 and into the beginning of 2024. One of the things that we're doing is we're buying land and we're building houses. We're still hitting over the average median home because it's the safest market to hit. And right now with even uh, the, the increase of mortgage rates, the number one asset class that's purchased with cash is homes that are in excess of $300,000. So the average upper median buyer is what our demographics hits. We actually are target marketing these buyers to come in and cash buying is up by 14%. So great time to build homes where upper median home buyers can go in and not just buy with mortgages, but with cash. And so the market is still on the incline. The market is doing great in the residential sector. For those of you guys who are waiting for a break from the residential market, I think you've missed it. I think we're going to continue to see um, a, a, an increase in residential prices. And one of the indicators that, that makes, that drives me towards looking in that way is that in July, rental rates actually inched up to some of their highest numbers nationwide. 
which tells me that if people can't get into homes and there's a supply and demand issue for product like this, people are willing to pay more in rent to get into a place because they can't afford mortgage rates and they can't afford homes. And so ladies and gentlemen, today is a great day to build wealth. And so everything that we do in the single family sector that we build, we take that active income and we deploy that active income into passive income and we invest in assets just like this one. And so if you guys want to understand more about how to deploy assets, how to deploy capital into assets and be able to generate capital and cash producing revenue from assets, click below, follow us, pound and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you next time.